Thanks for staying with us. Uh, it's now time to move to river state, as it were. The politics there, we're going to review a local government election. And uh, we, have, uh, we have the information that the river state local government elections on October 5, uh, 2024, that was two days ago, were marred by violence with explosions and gunfire at Port Harcourt, particularly targeting the APC secretariat and the Obio Akpo local government area. Despite the chaos, the Action People's Party, APP, won 22 out of 23 chairmanship seats. Allegations of bias and efforts to disrupt the election were rampant. Governor Similai Fubara also raised alarms about potential violence planned at local government headquarters, calling on security agencies to ensure calm. The police have launched investigation into the matter. Mr. Chairman has just declared there is no gain stressing the fact that this election conducted today is transparent and is credible. This result resonates the decision of the electorate in River State to affirm their democratic rights. And it goes to say that democracy has come to stay. The local government elections. A number of us were in the field. We also had our members in the field and we received reports from them accordingly. And of course, the general view is from our observation that the election was largely peaceful. People came out to vote and um, we can indeed say that there truly was an electoral exercise in River State. Okay, those were some snippets from what happened after the election in River State. I'm shocked that um, uh, not many uh, newspapers carried this. In fact, all the newspapers that we looked at this morning, only the Punch newspaper carried something about the election in River State. I thought it would, be, it would, it would flood the newspapers this morning, but that was... Uh, uh, I was disappointed, as it were. Well, to discuss this with me, I have Wisdom Chap Jumbo, a public affairs analyst. Good morning and welcome to the program. Thank you once again. Good morning. I'm trying to make sense out of all that is happening in River State. Thank God you are the chap with the jumbo-sized wisdom. <laughs> you are going to talk to us. Sorry, I had to do that. I like the way that name is. Okay, so <laughs> help us make sense of it. Um, election in River State has been held, whether we like it or not. Uh, but that is not the issue. The issue is, you know, just your takeaways, first of all. Yeah, thank you so much. Yes, the election held um, on the 5th of October. Mm -hmm. um, in that way, okay, the, the governor insisted it was going to happen mm -hmm. against the law or not, or whatever court judgment or not. And um, the election held across the three local governments in River State. And uh, we understand that the 22 um lgas were won by the app, APP yeah. and then uh, one of the lgas which is Iche local government was won by um, action alliance that's aa party mm -hmm. and uh, swiftly the governor has sworn them in yesterday and then <coughs> sorry and then uh, we want to see how that will play out okay well but um a lot of a lot of experts have said that um courts uh, quoting them directly cannot stop election they should not stop election it is within the law to conduct the elections and that's what the constitution stipulates and all that and the election has been held the courts cannot uh, uh, rule against it but I, i'm just i'm just curious uh, action alliance and then <laughs> app just sweeping everything. I understand that PDP didn't participate, so mm. that's understandable. The ruling party did not participate. Mm. And the second best thing in, in River State is APC, and this one has a lot of factions, and more or less they did not participate, even though they were there on the ballot and all that. So I don't know how, what do you feel about the, the winning? Does it give us the does it give the election the credibility that it was free and fair? That's why a small party won. Or what do you think about what really played out? I like that you speak. You mentioned credibility, mm -hmm. and um, that's what we need to focus on. Was this election credible? Was it in compliance with the River State electoral local government electoral laws and the Electoral Act of Nigeria 2022? Um, is it in comp uh, compliance with these relevant laws? So that's where we need to focus on. I think it's where many Nigerians are not, you know, uh, 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 focusing on a lot. Uh, that's where the problem is. 
You know, so first of all, uh, there was there was a, a, a court mandatory injunction that oh, the River State Independent Electoral Commission must hold an election, mm -hmm. you know, for the local government. That's fine. That was an interim injunction. But we had a case that was ongoing at the Federal High Court as far back as July, uh, July the second to be precise. You know, there was at first an interim order, and then all parties came to court and they placed their cases, and then um, uh, the court reserved judgment for a date. And on September 30th, the Federal High Court in Abuja, you know, passed this judgment. And that judgment stated clearly, and what are the issues we're not looking at? You know, I, I wish this was indeed a credible election. Um, what the outcome of what we have seen would have really been worth celebrating. But of course, we don't see, you know, the credibility in this. First of all, what are the issues? The issues first was RISEC, which is the River State Independent Electoral Commission, was not in compliance with the process according to electoral act, you know, to, to get the voters register. You know, first of all, according to what the judge said in the judgment, he said they are supposed to get, you know, updates and stop voters registration for river states um, 90 days before the scheduled date of the conduct of the election. That wasn't done. INEC has also come out to say, look, they had applied twice for this, but we had an interim order or an order of court that stopped us from releasing this to RISEC. And, and so, according to the Electoral Act, INEC is supposed to, for a state that wants to conduct an election, you announce, all parties will inform voters' education, uh, inform the people, those that have been above 18, you know, as at, after a general election, will have a, a window to register, you know, and then the voter register is updated, and then it is stopped, and then it is presented, certified copy to the, to the State Electoral Commission, to conduct the election. If me and you can just download any document online and use for an election, everybody will be conducting the election. But the law says INEC must provide the certified copy of that updated register to any state that wants to conduct an election. And River State is not peculiar in this matter. So let us not be looking at River State in a way. In Quara, the local government election also, the Federal High Court also barred INEC from providing the voters register you know, to the Quara Independent Electoral Commission. And that case was taken to court by the PDP. The one in Rivers was taken to court by the APC. So these issues are not peculiar to River State. It's just that we are not trying to be in compliance with the law. So the issue before us now in River State is that uh, uh, the RISEC is, is breaking the law or is not in compliance with the law, Electoral Act, Section 9, Section 28, Section 29, and Section 108. All okay, of my, my, <coughs> my, my concern now is, yes. it seems everybody is just breaking the law. Uh, if, if I may ask, yes. what jurisdiction does a federal high court mm -hmm. have in state matters over a state high court? Fantastic. This has been an argument mm -hmm. in every quarter. Number one, INEC is a federal agency. And it's a defendant, or it's a defendant in this matter. Um, uh, the police is a federal agency. What about RISEC? RISEC is a state agency. But you know, INEC as a federal agency will provide the voters register to RISEC. Police is a federal agency. The DSS is a federal agency. They will all provide security for this election. If you need to challenge a federal agency uh, uh, in court, you have to go to the Federal High Court. That is the jurisdiction. So that is the bottom of the matter here. It's not, oh, does the Federal High Court have jurisdiction to hear the matter? Eh -eh. Even the injunction they got at the River State uh, 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 High Court, INEC was not a party to that case. The police was not a party to that case. And the, the DS was not a party to that case. It was the APP, you know, uh, uh, which was a plaintiff, and the defendant was RISEC and the River State government. And it's an interim injunction. Interim injunctions have a lifespan. They are not a substantive judgment of court. It's what we're not paying attention here. But the elections I've had, I think River State will be a test of true local government autonomy when we begin to hear these cases in court. And, and some of us want to see how the court will play this out, really. Against court orders, elections I've had. What is going to happen next is what we really want to look at now. 
So I was <laughs> called on you, you, you know, for the layman, it's and they have appealed the case. So, so you know, yeah. they've appealed the case at the federal high court. So we want to look. We hear first of all that the their their still execution was rejected. We've not seen um, a confirmation to that. Uh, but we saw a last minute note from their lawyers that uh, they've written to the appeal court uh, to to I mean, to appeal the case. And we want all facts to come to the court. You see, we are not in a banana republic. And uh, here we are guided by the rule of law. I, 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 what is Maybe it should leave the, the high courts mm. to a Supreme Court or something, appeal so, court I mean, or something. So, yeah. so the high court, because, the because court, there's a high court, court yes. there's a high court that yes. give one give one judgment. Yes. There's another high court, whether it's federal or state, yes. that give us still another another judgment. Yes. And what we have seen from from what has always been happening is mm. that everybody goes to the court that favors them. Mm. So now even whatever the law might say mm -hmm. some people are still looking at it as okay those people who knew that when they get to abuja it will favor them went to abuja those who wanted to stay back home stayed mm -hmm. back home and the ndsc and uh, all the people who are involved also are talking about the fact that mm -hmm. some judges are giving judgments that they should not give so like you said it's going to be very interesting look, let's look at how we, it's going we, to we, be we, we, let's leave the ndsc to handle, you know, any judge they feel was against, you know, its processes or had given a wrong judgment, we we'll leave that matter for the NJC to settle when it is right. Like but the, their wrong judgments are affecting us as people. Well, that is for them to decide at the end of the day. It's not for me and you that, you know, outside of the court. Now, what we are saying now is, um, like the legal practitioners we say, whether a judgment is right or wrong, you first obey, and then you go on appeal if you don't like it. So, so, so the point we are now trying to make further is what are, what will be the consequences, you know, uh, uh, for not obeying a court judgment of this man of this manner. And remind you that the 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 chair of the River State Independent Electoral Commission is chaired by a retired judge. So we really want to see how all of this will play out. River State will be the test of our true provisions of the law anybody that wins at the end of the day whatever the outcome of it i mean the rest of us will make peace with it the court has spoken but i want to refer you now to the other seven of the judgment mm. of the federal high court which we want to see how that will play out in, in the appeal court at the end of the day he said an order is hereby made setting aside all acts or things done or purported to have been done by the first to the fifth defendant in furtherance of the conduct of the purported local government elections in River State, stated for 5th of October, until the mandatory provisions of the law are complied with by the second defendant. The second defendant here is RISEC, which is the River State Independent Electoral Commission. So you see, this is what the Order 7 clearly stated, but against this, the election still held. We want to see what the consequences would be and let us you know exhaust all line you know of 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 of, of our court processes to really challenge this matter and mind you so you know the supreme court judgment that you know was was being referred to all the time in this matter was passed in the 11th of july that judgment also led to rest all of the issues around local government and all of that there was one particular case you know, the tenor of the previous local government chairman expired in River State 17th of July mm -hmm. this year. The governor was sworn in 23rd of 29th of May 2023. He had between then and June to plan for an election for the local government. Mm -hmm. He did it for political reasons best known to him. Now, on the wisdom of the state... Almost all of them yes, did that. They just... Good. On the wisdom of the uh, uh, River State House of Assembly, led by Martin Samewoli, they amended the law. Which is still a problem as well. We'll, co we'll come to that. <laughs> they <laughs> amended the law, mm -hmm. the River State Electoral Law, and the River State Local Government Law to say, look, in event of no election, or election has not been held, and this was in January this year, we are extending the tenure of the Local Government Chairman by six months to give room for that election to happen. Everybody argued this matter until the Supreme Court judgment came and said, look, they are in their right to extend the tenure of the local government chairman. Just like the National Assembly, in the event that an election cannot be held in the country, 
the National Assembly can extend the tenure of the president and the governors, you know, uh, because of that. And, and that was laid to rest. But still, uh, 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 that was not honored. But today, we are arguing that... The, the problem here is that yes. this is river state that mm. has two heads yes as far as we we know mm -hmm. there is a sitting governor and there is a governor that is not sitting that's in rivers <laughs> yes whether we <laughs> like it or, whether, whether we like it or not there's someone who's dictating what is happening what, in river state uh, uh, okay uh, you <laughs> want to hear from me <laughs> okay there is an assembly in river state mm -hmm. one loyal to the governor who is sitting and the other one loyal to the governor who is not sitting mm -hmm. Yes, there are judgments that we are looking at. One in favor of the government which is sitting. One which is in favor of the government that is not sitting. That is how it is no, seen. There, there, no, no, there, it may not. It may not be what is right. But there that is no is other the, judgment. Mm -mm. There's, there is no other. Judgment. There is a judgment that the River State government mm -mm. is hanging on, which may not be right. But they have their judgment that they are using they to justify have, their actions. No, they don't have any judgment. They've lost every single case on that matter referred to the State Assembly. I will refer you now to the judgment of Justice Omotosho of the Federal High Court Abuja in January that laid to rest all of the issues of the State Assembly. That matter is still there. They've not even appealed it. They begin to create all other cases, uh, matters in court, which they won't still not want. Now, what is the issue? We presented a budget, they presented a budget to a four-man assembly, uh, assembly in December, mm -hmm. uh, specifically on the 13th of December 2023. And Justice Omoto in his judgment laid to rest that issue in a judgment after hearing all the cases. Number one was that he affirmed who was the rightful speaker of the assembly, which is Martin Zamewule. He also went on in that judgment to clarify and state clearly that the budget presented to those four men is null and void, and the governor should represent the budget to the properly constituted assembly by Mattis and Mewili. We can argue this, and there are many arguments in court ongoing, no other judgment has been passed, which have argued that section 109 is what they are hinging on, subsection 2. But we don't, uh, sub, sub, section 109 of the constitution, 1G, that says if you defect another party, your seat is vacant. But we don't go further to read the next section, which is cause where the argument has been that somebody will you know affect the provisions of that first session and they will provide us to say look in the event that your party joins together to form a coalition of one party your seats remain but the next session also went further to say look only the speaker can give effect to say look wisdom as member of assembly you have lost your seats in effect of your you know you have moved to the next party it's not those outside the assembly that can do that. Mm -hmm. All of this, we are leaving to the courts to decide. You, see, the the you see what is, is happening. My, my point I want mm -hmm. to get now, I mean, analyzing all of this, mm -hmm. is where does the rule of law lies in all of this? Should we continue to allow this to be just a word of mouth of individuals? Mm -hmm. If you have an issue, test it in court. Go to court. For example, if you read the news recently that the VIO matter that also mm -hmm. has gone to court, mm -hmm. when Wiki was governor, he, he you know he challenged the tax issue in court. We need to be able to challenge some of this in court. And then when the court passes judgment, please can we all obey it? Otherwise, we are calling for anarchy. Exactly. So right now, mm. like I was saying, yes. No matter what we see, it depends on where you're standing. Mm -hmm. The people who are standing on this part of the divide believe mm -hmm. what they believe, and the other people believe what they believe. Mm -hmm. And that's because there's been precedents where people just do not obey court orders, yes. and they get away with it. So it's going to be interesting times. Let's see how it plays out. Like you said, the RISEC uh, uh, boss is a retired judge, retired which means judge. he knows what he is doing. I hope he does. <laughs> <laughs> he knows what he's doing. I hope he does. Just like the Supreme it. Court just, justices mm. knew what they were doing in mm. the previous election, the, mm. the 2023 election, and mm. talked uh, five-hour judgment, and then we still didn't see what it, it, it I'll did. Tell you, I'll tell you what my worry is. In all of this, my worry is... Um, what is really going to happen, you know, to our local governments in River State at the end of the day? Um, other states have done local government elections. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not they're in conformity, you know, with the laws also, we'll leave that 
until they are all challenged. Mm -hmm. But what we need to project here, which is the focus, is the 774 local government in Nigeria. Yes, I understand now we want to make them active, we want to make them work as they should by the constitution, but we need to be very careful, you know, in setting wrong precedents. And I hope the federal government, and Serap has written to, to the president on this, on this particular subject to say, look, um, only focus on states that held credible local government election. And what is credible? What affirms what is credible here is when we check the relevant laws guiding local government elections in your state and the Electoral Act 22, are you in conformity with this? If it is yes, then we we'll move on. If it is no, let's allow the courts to decide. Because if we don't do this, what we are doing is just setting ourselves up for the wrong president. And the issues we have had in state governments across the country will begin to trickle down to the local government. And I hope at this juncture, uh, the National Assembly will speed up its process to create um, an independent you know, institution that will handle elections so that there will be some form of uniformity, mm -hmm. indeed, across the 774 local mm -hmm. governments. Because if that was, uh, if that was you know, in place, what we have seen play out in River State now wouldn't have been the case. You know, what we will see playing out in Quara, because like I said, this is not peculiar to River State. In Quara, there's an existing, you know, court order also restraining INEC from giving the voters register, you know, to, to, to the Independence Electoral Commission in that state. And that case, case was taken to court by the People's Democratic Party. You know, so we need to be very careful in all of this. The local government uh, uh, chairman's warning yesterday by Governor Simela Efubara, they are going to resume office today, as they have said. But that shouldn't stop the court cases to go to court. You know, let us test it to the last. And if at the end of the day, if what they have done on the 5th of October is right, we will all come together to congratulate them and yeah. support them in the local government. It's going to be a very long walk for us uh, yes. because uh, we cannot just start from rivers. There's, mm. there's a backlog we need to clear. Yes. Uh, because if you remember before to the 2023 election or mm. after the 2023 election, the, the in thing was go to court. And every Nigerian began mm. to see the courts as a place where you, they already, already have confidence that mm. they are going to have a particular kind of judgment and all that. So the rot has to be cleaned from a lot of other places before yes. it can get to, get to this. But let's see how it goes. In the, in the coming days, we'll see uh, what um, a retired judge... Uh, had in mind before he did what he did <laughs> and what the other sitting justices mm. had in mind before they passed the kind of judgments that is now giving uh, Fubara the, the confidence that uh, of, after all it has happened before mm. and I, I will not be the first person. But let me end by saying um, um, we want to respect the rule of law and let us do that in its entirety. And as we work to empower... The you are talking to us. You are not yeah. talking to the political class because yes. they are the ones that do not obey the law. Yes. And I'm saying this to all of them. And why we want the 774 local government to indeed work, which some of us are happy. We've been campaigning for this for a long time. Mm -hmm. We hope to see them work in the right way. And now, some of us will now focus on the local government to, you know, to checkmate them a lot in their activities. You know, there's been a lot of corruption hidden under the carpet in the local government. And now is the time we have to raise and bring out all of those conversations. The EFCC, the ICPC should indeed put their spotlights now on the local government. They also have fat budget too. Mm -hmm. My local government, the budget for my local government is more than four billion. So that's a lot of money. So we want to see them work on the allocation that is will be coming to them by the end of the month. The ones that have done uh, credible elections. We want to see them put them to good use. Okay, I do hope that um, it will open another conversation about whether or not, INEC should take over the state elections, as uh, some people are proposing. Uh, then we'll see how we can fine-tune these Definitely. things. Whether they are not taking over what else is missing, if they're taking over, mm -hmm. what role can they really play uh, to make sure we have credible elections, credible even though INEC's own election <laughs> will, may not be credible. <laughs> but uh, Wisdom, we'd like to thank you for coming thank on the so show much. this morning. Always it's always a pleasure. Yes, uh, we're, we're thankful that you're here today. Well, we've been talking with Wisdom Chap Jumbo, a public affairs analyst. We were looking at River State uh, election and the, the entire political uh, atmosphere in River State. We do hope it will get to that time where we obey the law and keep the law and make sure that we are guided by the law so that it doesn't lead to anarchy. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at the fact that Lagos State is planning to yet again ban single-use plastics, sachet water by January 
2025. It started with uh, the plates that we were using to, I uh, would call them takeaways in uh, Nigeria. Now they're getting to something else. So let's see how that goes.